We are making a Star Wars movie in 30 days and I am responsible for everything CG. Looking back at my older work, I realized that everything fell apart in the compositing process. So I dove into fusion like two atoms embarking on a chemical honeymoon. Unfortunately, there is a scarcity of fusion tutorials to learn from. <sighs> Guess I'll have to do it myself, which is what I did. And these are some of the final shots that made it into the movie. First of all, we need to slave one ship. It seems like a simple shape, but it actually cost me quite some time to get it right. Once I cut the base shape of the slave one, I definitely needed a slave two. I mean, we need to add some details and stuff. So I went into my old renders to steal some of my work. First, I stole the bottom of this car model and slapped it on the slave one. And then I stole this machine gun that I made earlier because I really wanted to do this. And so I placed it on the ship right here. So now we have to animate it. I'll have it parented to this empty and glide it over the screen in a straight line. And then I'll just follow it with my camera. However, the car part is very heavy. So I had to use a lighter model to use as a dummy to get the animation right. Now we need some stars. So I made a simple geometry node setup to distribute stars all over my Blender galaxy. This was also the first time I used light linking, a wonderful new feature in Blender. So now I can light the ship separately from the planet. Oh right, the planet. So I took some textures from solarsystemscope.com and I slapped them onto a UV sphere. The hardest part was using the planet as a mat to soften out the edges. But using a bitmap and some compositing magic, it ended up looking like this. Not bad. Add some lens flares, glow, lens reflections, sounds, color grading, and this is the final result. To be honest, I'm not a big fan of the lens flare right here. It seems a little bit too animated, but I'll leave this wonderful possibility for growth to another time. Next up, set extensions. We are going to integrate 3D into our footage and make sure it fits. So first I modeled these very basic shapes with some Tatooine houses as reference. They were easy to make. Then for the texturing, I mixed two textures together and drew on it by hand and it looks awesome. I've got some videos on how to do this, so check them out. But first, make a 3D render with all our assets in the background and bring it into DaVinci Resolve. Now there's a couple of things you need to know. Contrast decreases in the background, as you can see in this shot here. So we want to make sure that the contrast of our CG objects are in a similar range to other objects in our shot. Luckily in this footage, we have visible reference to see how much the contrast should actually be. So I'll add a CC note and change the gain and gamma in order to make it look like the contrast of this tree. Now we have to paint highlights on the roofs. I add a CC node, increase the gain and change the color to whatever color I'd like. In this case, it's orange. Now I'll add a mask paint node and set the stroke duration to 150, 200. It depends on how long your shot is. Then I just simply draw the highlights. Then do the same thing, but this time draw the shadows. As you may see, CG is digitally straight and we want to hide that. That's why I drew some sand on the edges to give the illusion that the building is standing in the sand. But I forgot to mention that we have to track our footage in order for these assets to keep standing still in the same place even when camera movement occurs. For this one it's pretty far away so I used a single point tracker and placed it right in the sand. The Vinci's tracker is actually pretty good and magically it worked out. Now plug your footage into the tracker and under operation select match move. And just like that your footage is tracked. So now we can draw the sand by copying our original footage and placing it above the other footage. And now we can add a mask paint node once again and draw your sand. I made sure to draw more sand into the corners because that's usually where sand would pile up. After doing all that we simply have to draw some shadows, add some atmospheric glow over the entire image. I've also used Da Vinci's magic mask to mask out this person so that it can walk in front of the building which is quite handy. Now for the finishing touch to make the footage just a little bit better I decided to place some dust particles in the front. We're almost done. We only have to do a color grade and if you want to know how that works I highly recommend watching this video next. 